That was beautiful. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. I have a few announcements. Uh, next week after church, there will be a deacons meeting in fellowship hall right after worship. The farmer's market, of course, is on Thursday from 4 to 7. I did make a little error in my schedule, and there, of course, is no special music today. I uh, have the people that are coming. I had them the wrong week, so it will be in August. Grace Mayville will be here next week to play music on a keyboard or piano or organ. I'm not sure what, but she's picked her song, so we're ready to roll. Uh, Rhiannon has a birthday on the 27th, so if you see Rhiannon, wish her a happy birthday. The 2022 directory is finally ready. It's out there. I, I said I guess we had to cut it off somewhere, so <laughs> it's where it is. There's a sign-up sheet for the tomato show to bring items. I don't know how the bean thing is going. I brought four pounds in the other day, so. Um, also, I'm sure Susan will be contacting people and scheduling uh, folks for working in her booth. Anything else, Susan? Yes, I'll come up here. Um, there is also a sign-up sheet for the outdoor worship service which is the last Sunday in August. So if you, we're going to do what we did last year, have a potluck, so there's a sign-up sheet, you know, uh, bring a breakfast dish or a um, sweet rolls or juice or milk. You know, paper products, coffee and tea will all be provided. And yes, I will be seeing you about the tomato show if I haven't talked to you already. <laughs> She'll hunt you down. And I think Pam's going to be reaching out, if she hasn't already, to folks who might want to be in the chime choir uh, for the outdoor service and the pet blessing, right? So uh, if you're new, I don't know, Adam, if you are, want to ring chimes. Huh? You do almost anything? <laughs> so... Anyway, if you want to ring chimes, I'm sure she'll have a spot for you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it, I mean, she does very complicated chime ringing, but it can be easy to do, and she's a good leader, so. Are there any other announcements? Nancy! All right. Thank you all, very much. all right. Thanks to everybody for for bringing out your cookies. They look delicious out there. So, anyone else? All right. Yes, Derek. For, for the fair, okay. Yeah, that's coming. Up. Is that this next week? Oh boy, and you're going to demolition derby, okay. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> okay, Nancy?
Wow, there we go. And we'll put that to good, a good cause for, for uh, its purpose, so. Anyone else? All right. I'm just glad to see everybody today. Uh, I guess we will then begin our worship and rise if you're able and join with me in the call to worship in your bulletin. The hope of a future where humankind celebrates peace among every creature is upon us. The hope of peace is right around the corner. In another time, our ancestors prepared for the birth of a great king, unlike any other before or after, one who would walk with us alongside in our struggles and teach us of the great love of God for each of God's people. Because Jesus lived, we also live in hope. Even when we are troubled and clouded with doubt, the hope of peace and partnership is always within our reach. The extraordinary life of God among us has lived and still lives in all who believe. Even as we wait for his second coming, we know that he is already here and he is the hope for tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 334, With Grateful Hearts, My Thanks I Bring. seated. Good. A prayer of confession. God of love, love and Lord, and of, Lord mercy, of mercy, we have, we have taught, taught by, by the best. Be we have been taught by the best. Jesus, Jesus was, was master, master of loving and, and granting mercy. mercy. We should, we should have, have learned, learned, but we, we fail woefully short of God's, God's expectations, expectations of us. Love, love and mercy stay too much a part, part of our heads. heads. Even, Even when, when these fill our hearts, our actions, actions do not fully, fully proclaim, proclaim them to the rest, rest of creation. creation. Remind us that, that for every suffering child, every struggling adult, and every, and every case, case when creation, creation is damaged by our abuse or neglect, there is, there is an, an opportunity, opportunity to demonstrate, to demonstrate God's, God's love, love instead. instead. 
Forgive us our sins and guide us in right paths. Through the, through the Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The assurance of pardon. God is love. As love proven through Jesus' incarnation, a great mercy has been given to all things that live and exist. It is a clear, straight, and very broad path. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and through him that we are forgiven. Amen. The scriptures for today, we begin with Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the, of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. And from Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. As you therefore have created Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Watch out that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by the, removal, excuse me, by the removal of the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ, when you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Thank you, Dick. All right. Katie and Emma will probably come and help me. Emma, you are really getting big. She's really changed a lot. Okay, you come over here so Tom can see you good. He's back there running everything today because Bob's still not feeling very well from his cold. So if you girls will come over here, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, pass the peace, right? Come on, all right, come on. Where do you wanna stand, Emma? You just wanna sit in the chair? Okay, whatever. We're a church where everybody can do what they need to do. <laughs> Here we go, ready? They're already standing, they're ready to go. Hello, everybody. What do you say? It's gonna be a beautiful day. So clap your hands, dump your feet, turn around, and take a seat. All right, come on in. Go down here. You want to get your microphone? Oh, I have two seats here. Okay, the double chair. Mm, I don't know about that. I think I better move one of those. Today, 
Um, I know on Sunday school, you're gonna talk about this too. Remember the little book that Jolie gave us about the Lord's Prayer? It was a little tiny book and where Jolie learned the Lord's Prayer a different way than what we do, that what we usually do it. And it's partly just reminds us that it doesn't matter how we pray as long as we pray to God. And the very important part is, hmm? You want to pray too? Oh, well, she'll, yes. Well, Sissy's very good at praying, actually. Very good. Um, but the very, very important part, and I know that Colleen is going to, Mrs. Gregg's going to have this in your children's lesson, your Sunday school. But the important part is that we pray for other people, that we don't put what things that we, things that we want above what other people need or what we really need. It's hard to, it's hard to um, remind ourselves that we don't really need everything that we think we need and we really want, right? I mean, we might, might not need a new bike, but we want a new bike or something like that, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because there are people who need lots of things in the world and they need our prayers because when God hears your prayer and God hears Emma's prayer, God hears my prayer when we pray by ourselves, when we're by our bed on our hands and knees or in our knees and pray, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, do you do that? Do you pray at night? But when we pray, all of us, it's like a big voice. You know how loud it is when everybody prays with us, right? It's like a big voice for God to hear. And God hears everybody's prayers. And what amazing thing is, God has different kind of ears than we have. God can hear it all at the very same time and know what everybody needs. Like, you needed new glasses. And you can see better, right? Better than you could without them. But God knew you needed glasses. Your parents knew it. And they said, well, we just have to get this done, right? So the, the thing about the Lord's Prayer is people pray it a lot of different ways. But the important part is that they pray. And they pray, and they pray, and they include other people in their prayers. I can tell you a kind of a funny story. Would you like to hear a funny story? This little boy said he needed a bike. This will be a good example, I think. Might be too old for you, but. Little boy, and he said he needed a bike. And every night he prayed for a bike. And his mom and dad said, you don't really need a bike. But he prayed for a bike anyway. So he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he had this little statue of Jesus' mother, which we call the Madonna. And she sat on the dresser and one day she was gone and his mom came in and he said, had written a note and he said, dear, dear God, if you ever wanna see your mother again, you will bring me that bike. He hid the Madonna in the drawer <laughs> and tried to hold Madonna, his, Jesus' mother hostage. That doesn't work. Mm -mm. No, God hears us when we pray for the things that we really, really need. So, and for what other people really, really need. All right? So, and Mrs. Gregg's going to talk to you more about the Lord's Prayer, and, and she's got some things for you to do. But we're going to do the Lord's Prayer with everybody today, just the way we always do, right? 
The same words we always use. Are we ready? Tell them, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us our pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, 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 I will be, be done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us, us our debts for theirs, as we forgive our debtors. Theirs. And lead us not uh, into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory, glory forever. Ever. Amen. Amen. All right. And now you can go off to Sunday school. <laughs> I thought that was probably too old a joke for them, but it was pretty cute. <clears throat> All right, we come to the time in our worship when we do ask for joys and concerns. I know there are a lot of, um, yeah, not. You know, I'm not a very political person, but there is a lot of strife going on right now with political issues. Um, we certainly want to keep our country in prayer for you know, rising prices, inflation, um, people trying to make ends meet. That little space where uh, ends meet is getting a little further apart for a lot of folks, so we want to make sure that everybody's cared for as much as we can possibly help them. As Derek said, we can, um, we want to keep the prayer and, <laughs> and the people in the, especially in the demolition derby in prayer, because it can get a little dangerous. I mean, you see what they do to those cars. So everybody stay safe. Uh, this is been exceptionally hot weather. I imagine it's not going to be easy on the livestock if this doesn't calm down just a little bit. So we'll want to keep everybody in prayer. Uh, I want to continue to keep Pete and Cindy and of course Steve and Alicia as their primary caregivers in prayer. I was over to see Pete. And he's uh, resting very comfortably. He knew who I was and was his smiley self when I got there. So it's a, just, just continue to keep them in prayer. As I said, the new directory's out, and we do have the appropriate addresses in, although I'm not sure we have Barb's real phone number in the directory. Might have to make a correction on that. But um, we... You know, we have the room numbers and things for Cindy and Pete if you want to send cards and for, Bar for Barb's new uh, living quarters there. <laughs> so uh, everybody can do that. Again, we want to give thanks for all the folks that came out yesterday and gave of their time and energy to bake the cookies and those sorts of things. We want to continue to keep Amy and Kathy. Um, the Leone family in prayer as they uh, grieve. His, uh, Larry's wife is up from Florida right now, so she will be traveling back tomorrow. Keep her and the grandchild in prayer for safe travel. Uh, is there any other prayer requests or any joys? Pam, when is your test? I'm on it. Oh, you're working on it. Big prayers for Pam right now. She's working on her test for her final uh, piece of her certified ruling elder program. It's been, a, it's been a long journey and one that we are very pleased with. So uh, we want to be with her while she's doing her best theologically and polity and all of those kinds of things that are part of, of doing this work uh, in prayer.
You guys are really quiet today. They're just too hot. <laughs> yeah, everybody's just kind of resting in the cool. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, well, if that all being said, then I think we will have Lynn, and if you haven't noticed a common theme today, Lynn will be playing for us the Lord's Prayer for our prayer hymn today. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, you are the power and the kingdom of our hearts. We come to you in this place and bring our needs, our joys, our griefs, our struggles. And we know that here you hear us whether we are in this building or worshiping from a distance makes no difference. Your power is omnipresent, all-encompassing, everywhere in the world, and we are so blessed to feel it in this place. As we ask for illumination on our word today, we know there are powers that we don't understand, but faith allows us to believe in even the things that we can't understand. We see from social media, from news, that there are so many people who struggle with your existence. We are truly blessed that we believe. 
that we can bring our hopes and our dreams and our needs especially to you. We've lifted up names of people who we continue to pray for, for Pete, for Cindy, for their caregivers, their children, and their loved ones. These people are dear to us as part of this congregation, no matter where they are living. And we bring one voice through our hearts to pray for them. We pray for those who will be in county fairs everywhere, for our livestock, that children have lovingly cared for, We ask for success, but more than that, we ask for safety. We live in a time when it is difficult still to know what is safe and what is not. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, grant us safety. We pray for our children, near and far, for we know that you have always seen all of us as your children, no matter what race, no matter what orientation, no matter what culture. We are God's children everywhere. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door is already been locked and my children and me are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything out of friendship, at least because of his persistence, he will give up, get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, would give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, would give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? to those who ask him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have just read to you from the Gospel of Luke, 
a version of the Lord's Prayer that's very different than the one that we grew up with or the one that we say with the children. I can tell you it does not roll off my tongue the same way that it normally does. It's kind of uncomfortable to read this version. When I read this particular one, I thought, oh, surely our updated new revised standard version of the Bible didn't change the Lord's Prayer that much. So I ended up going back and comparing notes. But if we look in our pew Bible, it is essentially the same thing. But there was something about it, and I had to really think about it, because it didn't carry the feel of power and substance of the prayer that I grew up with. We find that true with also our, uh, the Apostles' Creed is different ways and things. Now, we know that the Jewish children, the people, had grown up with very complicated laws, 613 or 616 different laws that they had to abide by to be good Jewish people. And they also had a difficult prayer structure. The people relied highly upon their leaders to take sacrifices and then make prayers for them. Now, of course, the people could pray to God themselves, but under that prayer structure, there was somehow more significance when the priest did your prayer at the synagogue after you've made your sacrifice. Now we also know that Jesus made it a point to remind and to teach the people that God was far more approachable than what they were accustomed to. And that they could be in a close relationship with God. One-on-one, -on -one, God and human being. If only humankind would take on the role of building that relationship through simple prayer. Jesus said, pray like this. There are times when our different faiths and learning has made it awkward to do corporate prayer. But when we pray, we should not have concern over whether we bring to God debts or trespasses or sins. Those are all insignificant differences. I know often at a graveside or at a bedside, the family will want to pray the Lord's Prayer. And people will stumble over the words and they hesitate. So I always try to remind people, don't stop if somebody says a different word. It doesn't matter how we ask that, what we call that. We're asking for the same thing. You can't get that part wrong. There's only one wrong way to pray, and that's when we pray with insincere purpose. Ours is a time when not only can we use prayer, but in our desire to follow the great, great commandment, loving God and loving one another, those are two commandments that we can feel the most comfort in. 
The Lord's Prayer is not only different from gospel to gospel. It is different from time to time. That's what different translations do for us. There is great beauty for me in the truth that this prayer has proven itself to be adaptable to the times. It has been translated and it has been learned in the context of the time it is written in from century to century to century. What is universal and fluid is that in prayer, we are in a zone where we're in conversation with God. Heart and soul, we're there. We are in a place of trust, one on one. We empty out the debris of the day or of what we've done, and we replace it with a power that gives us hope at the end of our prayer. It is not whether it is a vi there in our more modern translations, even more like the one we're more familiar with in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, that then adds, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Luke's translation is different. But the Bible that it speaks to us speaks very directly to God. The words are direct. The Our Father that we are accustomed to is kind of pushed away in the beginning. That very inclusive group corporate effort. But this version has definitely a feel of my father. We can take ownership in a relationship with God. This prayer meets God as his or her own. And then says, may your name be glorified. May your will be done. Not his name. But directly speaking to God as the source of all our power. That's how it begins. But then in Luke's inimitable healing way, he re-speaks to the inclusion that was also in our text today from Colossians. We have been prepared by a circumcision by Christ. Not one done as human hands, but one that has cut away the sins of the past and put us in a different ability to understand the importance of praying for what we need to help others. Praying for others over our own comfort to restore us by doing what we know is right by others. The latter part of the Luke scripture shows crisply and clearly how unblemished the love God shows us really is. God has a great big love for us and would not deny us what we need. God always wants to open the channels to feel and return 
that love to God. Let's us have that open space to do what we need to do for other people and prove our love to God through that work. But when we engage in this more simple Lord's Prayer, it brings us down to the basic of praying for others and praying for how they improve our lives and impact our lives. I thoroughly treasure the way that our children lead us in prayer. It is so special. But there is also something special about our time when we pray in thanksgiving for our blessings. And that we lift up our most distressed people in prayer for healing touch. When we voice more than even what Jesus taught as the basic. When we pray and we kind of end with this very powerful statement of confession that we read in the Lord's Prayer, there is a healing acknowledgement that there is nothing that we go through life alone doing. We're never without the care and understanding that is rooted in God's omnipresent love for us. There are no holds barred. There are no locked doors. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and ye shall find. God has given us a full-on commitment to never abandon, to never turn God's back on us. So pray as Jesus taught us to pray, no matter which translation or version you use. But remember to Ask for how you might help others in distress. Ask for special wisdom and for courage to end the despair and suffering that we see. And also be, make sure, above all, that you are joyful and grateful for the bounty of blessings that you have in your life. And for that, I think all God's children should say, Amen. Now, if you will rise, we'll bring forth our offering and sing our doxology. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh Lord, thank you for this time, for these blessings, for these people who know how to come to you in prayer and praise and be blessed by you. Thank you for these offerings. Let them be taken and used for the mission of this church and for the mission of your church in the world everywhere multiplied and multiplied. Amen. 
Our closing hymn is 543, God Be the Love to Search Me and Keep Me. and keep me. God be the prayer to move my voice. God be the strength to now uphold me. Oh, Christ, surround me. Oh, Christ, surround me. Bind to myself the name of holy. Great cause of witnesses in Prophets, apostles, angels, witness, crown Christ around me. Oh, Christ around me. Brightness of sun and glow of moonlight, flashing of lightning, strength of wind, depth of the sea to soul of planet. Oh, Christ around me. Christ surround me, walking behind to hem my journey, going ahead to light my way, and from beneath, above, and always, oh Christ surround me, oh Christ surround me, Christ in the eyes of all who see me, Christ in the that hear my voice, Christ in the hearts of all who know me, oh Christ surround me, oh Christ surround me. Place your faith in God and live in the light that is Jesus Christ. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great day. I'll see you next week.